Good morning. So glad that you could all join us this morning for worship. And we're glad that for all of you who are joining us online as well, you can find uh, the full bulletin to participate in our service on the front page of our website, stdavids.net. Um, as some of you, if you haven't been coming for a while, we're, we're slowly changing a few things. We'll be coming up to the altar uh, for to receive communion. Um, and also we'll be passing the plates. Um, so, so don't be surprised by that when the plates start coming around. Uh, we invite you all to stand with us as we sing our opening hymn together. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit had given them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Dwell. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Let us read verses 25 through 35 and 37 of Psalm 104 together in unison. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things, too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, And there is that Leviathan which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. 
A reading from the letter to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they did not believe in me about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, 
because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today is the day we honor our seniors, uh, those who are graduating, and um, I am delighted to invite Kate Hardaway to come up and to speak to all of you, you for, for a little while this morning. Um, Kate has been a, a longtime member of St. David's, and uh, so welcome. Good morning, my name is Kate Hardaway. I am speaking today to represent the youth group's high school senior class. I also happen to be the only senior in this year's youth group, so I was Sarah Kate's first and only option. Nonetheless, I am honored and happy to be here today. I was asked to talk about the Holy Spirit and the impact it has played in my life. Today's reading from Romans couldn't be more appropriate. It says, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we should, but the Holy Spirit intercedes with the signs too deep for words according to God's will. As many of you know, I was diagnosed with cancer two years ago, two weeks into my sophomore year. I was planning on many things that year, but cancer, not so much. More than ever, this is where I started to feel the Holy Spirit's presence in my life and help me in my weakness. I had definitely experienced moments in my life where I felt the Holy Spirit working, like special moments in youth group and summer camp. But now I was facing something extraordinary, and I felt the Holy Spirit guiding me and giving me strength. Through this process, I was blessed with the kindness and grace of a special group of people in the hospital called Child Life Specialist. The help, comfort, and joy they brought me each day was so meaningful. They prepared me for what to expect with chemo, surgeries, blood transfusions, and every aspect of my treatment. I wanted to know more about Child Life Specialist, so I googled it and found out about, out about the degree plan and schools that offered it. I began to look farther into this as a possible career path after high school. With very few options available to fill my days in the past two years, I focused on my schoolwork and was able to finish high school a year ahead of schedule. So technically, I should be a junior, but as the reading from Romans says, the Holy Spirit interceded in my life. My original plan was to take a year off, let my hair grow back, and figure out where I wanted to go to college. However, in January of this year, my sister had taken my dog Maisie to Lubbock with her. A few weeks later, my mom and I were planning to meet her to bring Maisie back home. With the idea of studying to become a child life specialist still rolling around in my head, I remembered that Abilene Christian University was one of the few schools in Texas that offered this degree plan. So we decided to meet my sister in Abilene so I could pick up my puppy, but also tour Abilene Christian University. While on this tour, I truly felt the Holy Spirit speaking to me. What I heard in my heart was God telling me, this is where you were supposed to be. Get here as fast as you can. At the end of the tour, the admissions counselor asked me about my plans, and I told her while I was originally planning to take a year off, I was now feeling like I wanted to go ahead and apply for admissions to start in the fall. This was on a Thursday morning, and she told me the deadline for applications was coming up the following Monday. I had just five days to write my essay and get all my letters of recommendations and submit my application. Somehow, I was able to get this all done, and just a few days later, I received a letter that I had been accepted. It is hard to believe the whirlwinds of events that have occurred in the last two years. Cancer, COVID, graduating early, getting accepted to college. Without question, my life has played out differently than I planned. I have been overwhelmed with love and prayers and support from my St. David's family and from people all over the world, many who I have never met. And I can tell you that God has been next to me every step of the way. Without question, the Holy Spirit has helped me in my weakness. While I did not always know how to pray as I should, I know that the Holy Spirit interceded with signs too deep for words according to God's will.
Thank you, Kate. I don't know if I can talk that, so. Uh, the Spirit gave them ability in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want you to picture it, junior high. Most of us have to think way back for junior high. The gym, which only hours before had been an assault of red dodgeballs whizzing across the room, had now been transformed. At least there was a feeble attempt at transformation with student council kids trying to make the space presentable with hanging a few balloons from the basketball rims and placing poster board art around the room. Faculty stood guard over the refreshment table as they watched for hawks like any sign, for any sign of, of malfeasance. Music echoed off the painted cinder block walls. I feel like some of y'all are having flashbacks and some, maybe some nightmares from, from junior high. Calling it a dance was generous as most stood in friend groups just eyeing the other groups in the room. Yeah, junior high dances. Most dared uh, not to show off their dance moves, fearing unending ridicule. Because, I mean, one wrong move, you could follow you the rest of your time at school. So people just stood as spectators. The disciples had waited for this moment, this moment we hear about in Acts this morning. Jesus had promised a helper, the gift of the Spirit, and here it is. I'm sure they didn't expect it to happen in this way. There's this amazing flurry of action, gusts of wind and tongues of fire and, and the ability to speak in other languages. The Holy Spirit bursts onto the scene in a pretty spectacular event. Pentecost, or the birthday of the church, as some call it. The way we describe it and celebrate it, it sounds like the Holy Spirit is just on full display. If only we could all experience this kind of close proximity to the divine. We could only feel the Spirit moving in our lives like this all the time. If the Spirit were moving in our lives like this, no one could mistake the presence of God. Right? Right? Maybe not. Maybe not. Because even with this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, this explosion of holy activity, our reading from Acts this morning says, but others sneered and said, ah, they're just filled with new wine. Something about this report, these cynical onlookers, is surprising, but at the same time, completely believable. I mean, pretty realistic. Even at the beginning, at the grand entrance of the Holy Spirit in the church, there are skeptics. Like a group huddled together at a junior high dance, these witnesses are quick to simply voice their disapproval. They think, oh, you know, these people are just drunk. And Peter has to correct them. He addresses the crowd saying, indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. They completely miss the spirit moving right in front of their eyes. They're present, but not involved. They look, but do not see. They hear without listening. The author of Acts gives us a little information that's often dismissed or overlooked. In introducing this passage, the writer says, when the day of Pentecost had come. See, this name of Pentecost has not been retroactively applied to the text. The writer's not telling about the Christian celebration of Pentecost. Well, yes, I mean, Christians honor this moment as the foundational event in the life of the church, you know, the birth of the church. The day of Pentecost actually precedes Christianity. The word Pentecost is a Greek word, meaning 50th, being 50 days from the feast of the Passover. And this name makes sense, right? 50th, 50 days. It's Pentecost in Greek, or Shavuot, meaning weeks in Hebrew. And it names an important feast for the Jewish people. Yes, Pentecost is a Jewish festival, one of the three biblical pilgrimage festivals. So that means that Jewish people from all over the world made their way 
to present the first fruits of the grain harvest at the temple. So this festival revolved around first fruits of the harvest and, and God's dedication to dwell with and care for God's people. But beyond this agricultural aspect of this festival, Shavuot or Pentecost, it also serves as an observance of the giving of Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. This festival recognizes the divine gift of the law because it signifies the covenant between God and the Hebrew people. Because this observance commemorates the gift of the Torah, Jewish people celebrate by studying the law. Many staying up all night to study the Torah. And they also rehearse the Ten Commandments. I mean, imagine that. Celebrating the gift of Scripture by studying Scripture. Honoring it by taking part in it. So this day, this day, this festival is when all of this dramatic scene plays out with the disciples spilling into the streets. It's no wonder there's this big crowd there, of people from all over, many speaking other languages. They're there in this pilgrimage. They're there to celebrate Shavuot or Pentecost. And so in addition to Pentecost being the day celebrating God's gift of the Torah, for Christians, for us now, Pentecost celebrates God's gift of the Spirit. How better to celebrate the gift of the Spirit than by taking part in it, by jumping into God's movement in the world with both feet. But too often we prefer to participate as spectators. And we miss the work of the Spirit before our very eyes. Even on this day, a day where it seems that the presence of God couldn't be more present, some couldn't help but be skeptics, sitting on the sidelines, settling for watching without participating, comfortably looking on without dancing. We risk being those on the outside, the ones confusing the Holy Spirit for somebody who just hit the sauce a little too early in the morning. In the prayer book, there's a, a beloved prayer. Everybody loves the prayer attributed to St. Francis. And the second half of this prayer goes like this. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. The gist of this prayer is about participating. Instead of looking for what to receive, it suggests that giving and serving, doing the work of the Spirit, that is where we are fulfilled. Most artists will tell you that if you're in a, a creative slump, Spending more time making art will help kickstart creativity. You don't overcome writer's block by just taking a year off, an extended break from writing anything at all. Without intentional effort spent actively sharing in the work of the Spirit, we can quickly slide back into being those skeptical onlookers. Missing the work of God that's happening before our very eyes. How better to celebrate the gift of the Spirit than by taking part in it? I mean, that's all well and good to say, but I mean, how do you do that? How do you exactly go about doing that? So we've been studying Galatians during our formation hour. And in Galatians 5, Paul tells the churches in Galatia that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Why not start there? 
And this isn't just a plea for everyone to be a little bit nicer. I mean, you should, but... Instead, for this Pentecost, take some time using a little deliberation, maybe even some planning, to actively pursue those things. To actively pursue love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Even just choosing one or two of those as maybe a focus for this week or the season of Pentecost this year. Don't be the spectator. Present but not involved. Looking but not seeing. Hearing without listening. Missing what God is doing in our presence. Have the courage to spill into the tree, into the street, even if people think we're drunk at nine in the morning. Have the courage to share in what the Spirit is doing. May we today honor the gift of the Spirit by taking part in it, by jumping into God, moving in the world with both feet. Amen. Standing together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not made. One being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again, and in accordance with the Scriptures, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For the cities of San Antonio and Terrell Hills, the nation and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For Blake, Max and Gray, Andrew, Frank, Brennan, Tim and Peggy, Ruth, Bill, Rena, Alice, Colleen, Betty, John, Robert, Edward and Susan, Joe and Haiti, Lee, Judy, Laura, Clay, Allison and family, Bayless, the Filch family, Becky King and family, Dee Dee, the family of Jack Bailey, Elida and all who are in danger, sorrow or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all priests and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. 
We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for Clay McGoy and all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Happy Pentecost. Uh, I invite you to turn to your announcement uh, insert in your bulletin. First, I'd like to say, uh, if you were not here on Wednesday, it was a fantastic night, and I am thankful for all of you uh, who were, um, have helped and, and uh, helped to make that night possible for the installation. Uh, thank you. It is good to be official now. Uh, now y'all are stuck with me, so you can't take it back anymore. Um, but, but again, thank you for, for everybody who helped make that night possible. It was wonderful to have St. David's feel like St. David's uh, again. So we have a big announcement um, that is not in your announcement sheet. Some of you may have seen that the diocese has again updated their COVID guidelines after uh, the announcement by the CDC a few weeks ago. Uh, our diocese has given each church the ability to roll back some of the protocols. And so our St. David's Vestry has made the decision for this coming week, uh, May 30th, um, to make mask wearing and distancing optional for those who are vaccinated indoors. Um, we'll also have the intinction chalice return. So for those of you who would like to dip in the wine next week, we'll, we'll begin doing that. And if you don't, that's completely fine. Um, as all of you know, this is a, a pretty big step and um, this is gonna be a step that requires us to encounter one another with love and, and with grace. Um, some will be cheering about this, ready to throw off their masks. Um, for some, this will be a kind of a source of discomfort. Um, they would prefer to wear their masks either as an example for uh, their kids who can't be vaccinated or um, because they have somebody they know who's immunocompromised or for a host of other reasons. Uh, there are gonna be some who who are ready to, to take off the mask indoors and some who aren't. 
Um, my hope is that the church will be a beacon of grace and understanding in this time. Um, there's so much division going on, as you all know, um, and, and I hope that we can um, embody and, and the spirit of grace uh, in this place. Um, so if you have questions about that, I encourage you to call the church office or you can email me uh, and I'll uh, answer any questions you have about that. We are going to continue to be having our 9 a.m. service outdoors for those of you who feel more comfortable with that. We're going to continue to have you know, our doors open, uh, use hand sanitizer, those types of things. Um, and so we're going to try to be as, as safe as we possibly can. Uh, as we kind of take this next step uh, to, to getting back to, to a sort of normal. Okay, so um, we have, it's kind of a fun day around here. We have a lot going on. We have kids on a mission. Uh, they look like they had a bunch of fun. I have my back to them at formation hour, uh, but everybody else was looking at them instead of me, so I'm sure they had a lot of fun. Um, we have gap group this afternoon for eight for grades three through five uh, this afternoon. And so um, invite anybody in that age range to, to take part in that. Um, also starting this Wednesday, um, we are trying to revive congregational singing a little bit, hoping all of you will sing a little bit more. I know it's been a year off. We have the hymnals in the back of the pews for you to sing. Um, but in addition to that, Ben is going to be hosting a, a time uh, on Wednesday evenings starting at 6.30 with a meal and then 7 o'clock with singing outside. Um, and this is not, a, there's no pressure for this. There's no commitment. You aren't officially joining the choir. This is just a chance to come and, and sing, uh, sing the songs that you're going to sing the next Sunday. Um, you won't have to sit up here in the choir, you'll be singing from where you're seated. Um, it's just a time for fellowship and singing. So we encourage you to come to that. Um, and then we also have a blood drive coming up on June 13th. You can find uh, more information if you use this QR code on, the, uh, on your announcement sheet. Um, but we need people to sign up for, for slots, and so you can do that through, through that QR code. Um, if you have any questions, you can call Nina King. They'll be doing the, the blood draw in the atrium. Um, they'll be setting up there. Um, and you can sign up for any slot between 8.30 and 1.30. So I uh, hope you will uh, consider signing up for that. So today is also uh, our, our senior Sunday. So Kate, you come up. And I don't know if we have any other graduating seniors here. Do we have any college seniors? Let us pray for our graduates. God of journeys, endings, and new beginnings, through the highs and lows and twists and turns this class has faced along the way this year, we have faith that your love has guided them from the moment they began up until their graduation day. We give you thanks and praise for the goodness that shines in the relationships formed, the knowledge learned, and memories made through their time at school. Bless their bodies, minds, and souls. Bless the, all of the graduates, especially Kate, and Grant, and Lindsay, Joseph, Catherine, Ashlyn, and Meredith, that they may celebrate your glory in themselves and all creation and use their education to build your kingdom of peace. Amen. Congratulations. Sarah, you got to stay up here. Um, so, uh, as you all probably know, uh, Sarah is, is leaving us. Uh, she's leaving St. David's staff. She's taking a position at St. Luke's as chaplain for their school. But they're still going to church here, so they're not, they're not leaving us, leaving us. Um, but she'll definitely be taking a, a new role, uh, especially on Sunday mornings. 
Um, and so we want to celebrate her time here. You haven't had a chance to sign it. We're going to put it back out there, and you can you can sign it uh, before you leave. <laughs> so at this point, I'd like uh, anybody who would like, especially children or youth, or uh, they'd like to lay hands on on Sarah as we send her off with a blessing. Sarah's been such an important part of this community, and we're truly thankful for, for everything that she's done for St. David's. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servant, Sarah, who has enriched this St. David's community and brought gladness and joy to this parish. Now bless and preserve her this time of her transition. Guide her in the continued use of your gifts. Give her sustenance for temporal and spiritual needs. Give her friends to cheer her way and a clear vision of the ministry to which you now are calling her. By your Holy Spirit be present in her pilgrimage that she may continue to travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life in Jesus Christ. And we pray your blessing, O Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think Sarah has, has earned a little bit of applause for everything she's done. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate today? Y'all can come spread out down here. Are y'all anniversary? Birthdays? Anniversary? <laughs> okay, so we got anniversaries over there, birthdays over here. Y'all can kneel down. Okay, so let us pray for our birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's a lot of birthdays today. Comes in waves, I guess. Okay, let us pray for our uh, anniversaries. Grant, O God, in your compassion that the Houdens having taken each other in marriage and the Rodriguez's having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made that they may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. How many years have y'all been? Four years. Nine. We'll have to give Bill a hard time for a minute. Okay. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> 